these chicks are a day old. The males are not wanted and go on to be gassed. 30 million a year. The females are heading for battery cages. After laying for one year, each producing more than 300 eggs, these birds will be killed. Nearly all will suffer from osteoporosis. Many will have broken bones. Others still will die before the year is up. Like most farm species, they're caught up in a chain that demands ever-increasing productivity. But can the output of sentient creatures be increased still further? without exacting an unacceptable price? Is there a biological limit to productivity? I've been thinking and writing about animals and agriculture all my working life, and have found that the scientific journals are carrying more and more articles about disorders of farm animals that were rarely reported in the past. Are these disorders related to the added demands upon the animals, to their ever-increasing productivity? It became clear during the war that we needed to produce a high proportion of our own food. The welfare state demanded good nutrition for all, and that, in the post-war years, seemed to mean more milk, more meat, more eggs. Livestock farmers were urged to produce more, and they responded brilliantly. Meat had never been so cheap or so plentiful. And the drive to productivity has continued unabated ever since. Yet there are really only three basic ways to increase productivity. Larger animals, faster growth, more and bigger offspring. But this has brought changes to the animals themselves that are causing concern to farmers, like Christopher Turton. The broiler industry started about 40 years ago, and we ourselves came into it 25 years ago. There have been enormous changes which have taken place in the industry over that period of time. And possibly the greatest change has been the accelerated growth rates which have been achieved used to take something like 84 days to bring a broiler to the normal standard weight when the industry first started. But today this can be achieved only in 42 days. And in fact, we are still taking off one day in the growing cycle for every year because of the progress which is being made. Christopher Turton is part of a chain that grows meat chickens, broilers, for the supermarket. British farmers raise some 500 million broilers a year. He's under contract to grow a quarter of a million under conditions set by his suppliers. Although he stocks his chickens less densely than most, he's concerned about the rising death rate. The mortality rates have risen from something like 2% and they're now standing probably at 5%. For us who look after the birds, we have to patrol the sheds far more carefully in order to find the dead birds and picking up many more means that whereas before we used to be able to carry them out just with our hands, today we have to carry a container because obviously there are far more of them than there used to be. Another problem which the industries increasingly have to face is the fact that birds are going off their legs at about day 35 onwards. Now, we do not understand why this leg weakness occurs. The birds must inevitably suffer. It is obviously this pain which prevents them from standing up. They are never going to recover, and therefore we have to take those out as culls, destroy them and take them out, because if we left them there they would, in the ultimate, die of thirst and hunger, and that wouldn't be right. Christopher Turton was so concerned that he examined the bird's leg bones. The one on this side is quite undamaged, the joint is normal, it is a healthy, shiny pink colour. The one on the other side, when I dissected the bone and took it out of the bird, the end was so soft that it disintegrated as I did it. 
the leg weakness among Christopher Turton's broilers isn't unusual. At the Agricultural and Food Research Council, the AFRC, scientists investigate animal welfare as well as productivity, and they're finding such problems throughout the industry. Broilers, as a result of genetic improvements, are growing faster and faster, and this is leading to a variety of, of problems with the, the metabolism of the birds. One of the major problems that appears to be the cause of the, the leg abnormalities is a condition known as dyschondroplasia. In the development of dyschondroplasia, the normal process of formation of cartilage in the growth plate and then calcification of this cartilage breaks down. The cartilage doesn't mature sufficiently for calcification to take place. So what one gets is a large plug of, of soft cartilage in the head of the bone. This is the, the growth plate of the bone in this area where the cells that are important in this area are called the chondrocytes, where the chondrocytes first of all increase in number and then they increase in size and calcify. Now in the problem of dyschondroplasia, we have a lesion of dyschondroplasia here and this is caused by these chondrocytes failing to complete their full stage of growth so that we get a large plug of relatively soft cartilage. AFRC studies on commercial breeds show that because the birds have soft cartilage where they should be solid calcified bone, the skeleton doesn't grow normally and the chicken's legs can bend or splay under their rapidly increasing weight. of birds where between 60 to 80 percent have subclinical lesions and in some flocks this leads to one to two percent of the birds becoming tripled. In another study of leg weakness, university scientists found the incidence of crippling in commercial flocks was even higher. The scientists don't wish to be identified because their research is sponsored by industry, but they studied over a thousand broilers from four intensive flocks. These are commercial birds which the scientists brought in to show the range of conditions they found. They graded the birds according to how well they walked. This is a grade zero, it moves normally. This is a grade three, it can still get around but it has leg abnormalities. And this is a grade five, it can't walk at all. Overall, they found that 77% of broilers had a detectable abnormality in their gait. In 22%, their welfare was compromised. As a result of their leg weakness, they could suffer chronic pain, malnutrition or dehydration. Five percent were so damaged they could take only one or two steps. and in some cases, they couldn't walk at all. In Britain alone, this suggests that about 25 million birds each year suffer leg abnormalities as bad as these. The worst are, of course, culled. If any minor cases do get through, this wouldn't affect meat safety. Professor John Webster advises the government on animal welfare legislation. Farm animals are made to work hard, as farmers are made to work hard, and it is right that they should be. However, it is almost inevitable that in going for increased productivity and increased profitability, the incentive is to push animals right to their biological limits of capacity to synthesize tissue. By a combination of genetics, by selecting the type and providing very high quality food, we have in certain animals, particularly the broiler chicken, caused the animal seriously to outgrow its strength, such that for the last 10, 15 days of its short 42 day life, there are severe abnormalities of bone development which we know to be painful and crippling. The wild ancestors of our farm animals, like these wild turkeys, have to be mobile in order to survive, to forage and find a mate. In commercial turkeys, as in all domestic livestock, 
years of selective breeding have radically altered their physiology and anatomy. Commercial pressures on the meat industry encourage the breeders to produce animals with as much meat on them as possible and as little of everything else which you can't sell. That inevitably manipulates the shape of animals to a pretty distorted degree in some cases. The most obvious case is the big-breasted turkey. These commercial turkeys were bought by a research unit from an intensive farm to show another skeletal condition, this time in the hip. The hip joint in the turkey is a ball and socket joint and much of the, the weight is transmitted through the a cartilage pad called the antitrochanter. As a result of the very heavy weight of the turkey, there can be very considerable pressures building up in this antitrochanter and this can result in the, the structure breaking down and leading to degeneration. This is the hip bone of a healthy turkey. The white area here shows the normal antitrochanter, the, the cartilage that absorbs the weight of the bird. When degeneration occurs, we see a much more severe erosion of the, the white area of the cartilage here. Dr Whitehead's team has identified this condition in all types of commercial turkeys. In breeding males, which are the biggest and heaviest birds, they found up to 70% are affected. When we look at the, the nature of these very severe lesions in turkeys, then it's probable that the, the turkeys with the very bad lesions are suffering pain rather than just discomfort. One side effect of the changes in the weight and shape of turkeys is that they can no longer mate. The body conformation of the turkeys is such that they the reproductive organs can't come in contact, so all reproduction of turkeys has to be done by artificial insemination. We've altered the animal so much that it can no longer survive without human intervention. We asked one of Britain's largest turkey producers to comment on the modern industry. Bernard Matthews replied, In my experience, programs of this type very seldom give a fair and unbiased presentation of the subject matter. Consequently, we do not wish to participate. Moreland Foods, Britain's other big turkey producer, turned us down as well. Pigs, too, may show growth disorders. Professor Donald Broom has been assessing German research on land race pigs. The increasing growth rate in our pigs which are being reared for meat has led to the same sort of problems that exist in broiler chickens. The muscles of the animals, that is the meat that is eaten, the muscles grow very fast, the overall volume of the animal increases very rapidly, but the legs don't keep pace with the rest of the body. At the joints where the growth points are, there is a greater chance that the normal growth procedures will not occur, and therefore that the, uh, the, the joints will not function properly, and that there will be pain for the animal in its joints and it's increasing in its incidence now the more efficient the production system is the greater the chances that there will be these joint difficulties for the animals. Keeping animals in such a way that their body is growing too fast for their legs is rather like uh, a child who is nine years old in weight having to stand on the legs of say a five-year-old the same kind of problems exist in our young farm animals. So far, there have been no comments.